Rot is not inevitable. That's the first thing medieval builders would tell us if they were standing on a scaffold today, looking down at modern timber wrapped in plastic membranes and chemical baths. Wood doesn't fail because time passes. It fails because we trap water inside it and then act surprised when nature finishes the job. Medieval builders knew this, and they built accordingly. The proof is still standing. Cathedrals, barns, bridges, roof frames, untreated timber, outliving steel-reinforced replacements installed centuries later. No paint, no tar, no pressure-treated chemicals, just understanding. Let's cut straight to it. Medieval builders didn't fight rot. They removed the conditions rot needs to exist. And once you understand how they did it, modern construction culture starts to look backwards. They stopped rot by controlling moisture, not by sealing wood. Rot is biology, not age. Fungi and bacteria require three things to thrive. Moisture, food, and stagnant conditions. Medieval builders attacked all three at once. Instead of wrapping wood in impermeable coatings, they designed buildings that made it almost impossible for water to stay trapped. Modern construction treats wood like something fragile that must be sealed off from the world. Medieval builders treated wood like a living material that needed to breathe. When water hit timber, it was expected to drain, shed, evaporate, and move on. Breathability wasn't a buzzword. It was the entire strategy. Sealing wood tightly often traps moisture inside microscopic cracks. Once coatings fail, rot accelerates. Medieval builders avoided that trap entirely. Their buildings didn't rely on maintenance cycles. They relied on physics. They chose the tree before they ever lifted an axe. Rot prevention started long before construction. Medieval builders were selective in ways modern supply chains rarely allow. Trees were felled in winter when sap levels were lowest. Less sap meant fewer sugars. Fewer sugars meant less food for rot organisms. This wasn't superstition. It was observation backed by centuries of trial and error. They favoured slow-grown timber with tight grain. Trees that struggled a little produced denser wood that resisted moisture movement naturally. Fast-grown timber moves water easily. Dense timber slows it down. This choice alone extended lifespan dramatically. Today, speed dominates timber harvesting. But, you know, medieval builders prioritised longevity. That mindset difference, well, it echoes through every beam that survived. They treated seasoning as non-negotiable, not optional. Fresh wood was never rushed into service. Ever. Seasoning was not a suggestion. It was the foundation of durability. Logs and beams were stacked off the ground, shaded from direct sun and exposed to steady airflow. Sometimes for months and often for years. This slow drying allowed internal moisture to leave evenly. The wood stabilised. Cracks were minimised. Internal stresses relaxed. By the time timber entered a structure, it had already done most of its moving. Modern builders often skip this step entirely, compensating with chemicals. Medieval builders knew chemicals were a shortcut that introduced new problems. Seasoning was free. It just required patience. Here's where medieval builders really separated themselves. 
their structures actively worked against moisture retention. Roof overhangs were generous, sometimes dramatically so. Walls were shielded from driving rain. Timber frames were lifted away from stone foundations with air gaps that broke moisture wicking. Vertical posts were mounted on stone bases instead of buried in soil. Joints were shaped to shed water rather than trap it. Mortise and tenon joints weren't just structural, they were hydrological. Nothing sat flat where water could pool. Gravity did the work, you know. Rain hit wood and was gone minutes later. Air was treated like a building material. Floors were raised to allow ventilation beneath. Wall cavities weren't sealed tight. Roof spaces were naturally vented. Moving air pulled moisture out faster than any coating ever could. This passive drying never shut off. It didn't depend on maintenance schedules. As long as the building stood, airflow continued doing its job. Modern construction often suffocates wood in the name of efficiency. Medieval builders understood that, well, stagnation is decay's best friend. In areas where moisture exposure couldn't be avoided, medieval builders sometimes turned to smoke exposure or light surface charring. This wasn't paint. It wasn't a seal. It was chemistry and physics working together. Smoke deposits antimicrobial compounds into the wood while driving out residual moisture. Light charring alters surface chemistry, making it less welcoming to fungi, while also reducing water absorption. This was done selectively, not universally. Unlike modern treatments that leach out over time, these methods became part of the wood itself. Modern preservation focuses on killing rot organisms. Medieval preservation removed their home. Once you remove moisture, sugars and stagnation, rot has nothing to work with. That's why medieval timber doesn't fail suddenly. It degrades slowly and predictably. Structures signal problems decades in advance instead of collapsing unexpectedly. That predictability mattered when lives depended on it. This mindset persisted well into the early industrial era. Only in the rush of mass production did we trade understanding for chemicals. Even during World War II, when materials were scarce and efficiency mattered, engineers rediscovered the value of airflow, elevation and drainage, because chemicals weren't always available. These principles still work today, if you're willing to use them. If you're building anything outdoors, start with properly dried timber. Don't rush it. Raise wood off soil and concrete. Allow air to circulate on all sides. Design joints and surfaces so water drains naturally. Right. So it's best to avoid sealing every surface with impermeable coatings. Let wood breathe. And you know, use overhangs aggressively. Also, space walls slightly off the ground. If extra protection is needed, smoke exposure or light charring really does beat trapping moisture under plastic films. Raised garden beds, for example, last longer when boards dry between rains. Sheds resist rot when airflow is built into the design. Tool handles can survive for decades when they're seasoned properly and left unsealed. Off-grid cabins built this way, well, 
they require less maintenance than chemically treated alternatives. Wood is not plastic. It moves, you know. It responds. Preservation isn't about freezing it in time. It's about keeping it dry enough to live out its full lifespan. Medieval builders succeeded because they respected materials. They didn't stop rot with products. Instead, they stopped it with patience, observation, and intelligent design. Their buildings weren't miracles. They were systems that worked with nature instead of fighting it. That knowledge was never lost. It was ignored. And if you're serious about history, construction, or survival skills, this is the kind of understanding that matters. If this is the kind of deep, practical history you want more of, subscribe to History HQ. Share this with fellow builders, historians, and survivalists who care about methods that actually work. These techniques protected timber for centuries once. They can do it again.